is a militant suffragette. But our great cause has always been best served by wit and cunning. We have laughed at those Westminster buffoons, but we have also had to arm ourselves against their iron will, for they will defend their interests with a cruel fist that smashes us all again and again and again. To be a suffragette takes courage, but the prize of equality is our pearl. We are feminists and our noble cause is for generations yet unborn. The authorities may shame us, shun us and question our sanity, but we will never give in, no matter the cost. Onwards to victory! But we are also human and I am so very tired. They will not listen to reason, these charming men who preserve the status quo by all means necessary. However, there are those who champion our cause in Parliament, not least George Lansbury, who resigned his seat to fight on the Votes for Women ticket and lost it just to a Conservative by the name of Blair. Now, despite the setbacks, progress is being made. It must be said that diligent letter writing and lobbying, they do have their place, but they are not enough. <coughs> Decades of polite intervention have held little sway. So many promises broken. It is truly sickening that something so simple and clear can be rebutted by the egos of a few narrow-minded men who happen to hold the keys to the mother of all parliaments, a door that has been closed to us for far too long. We will continue to knock, to petition, even though our fists bleed and bones are broken. We will never give in no matter the cost. And I say, shame on those who look the other way, who turn the page. For this is a war on women and the poor. Forcible feeding is now their weapon of choice. Do not believe the apologists when they say it is for our own good, that it is only used to preserve life as one who has several times undergone the torture of forcible feeding, I can tell you it is not. I call on Reginald McKenna to stop these reenactments of medieval barbarity that make a mockery of all that is civilized and decent. To give the necessary sustenance as McKenna would have it, the prisoner is forcibly restrained. The doctor then pulls your hair right back over the edge of the chair, forcing down your chin with the assistance of a wardress pinching your nose. A sharp metal gag is then inserted into your mouth as you gasp for air. It opens your mouth to breaking point, tearing your gums, and a stream of your own blood courses into your mouth and throat. You wretch as every fibre in your body fights against the rubber tubing as it is pushed down. Many of us are near drowned as the liquid flowed into our lungs. It's a truly noxious mixture of raw eggs, brandy or Whatever else they can find is poured down the tube, inducing more convulsions and retching. A moment's stillness. Then the tube is pulled out. You instinctively want to curl up in agony, but you are held. 
the withdrawal of the tube induces vomiting. You cannot breathe. Each time I have been left greatly fatigued and faint, alone in my thoughts and stinking mess, within shouting distance of my brave sisters, until it is time again. And yet, our determined action will not buckle under such degradation and misery. The establishment has been shaken to its very foundations, and its stranglehold on our voices will not last. Indeed, a woman has already taken up residence in Parliament, as recorded for all time in the 1911 census. It was a great adventure. And we will continue to rise up wave upon wave in ever greater numbers until they silence us no more. The Daily Mail would have us distract ourselves with fashion and tittle-tattle, belittling the efforts of those whose only motive is to see an injustice undone. This same publication coined suffragette as an insult. But Mrs. Pankhurst made it a badge of honour that I am proud to wear. I have suffered alongside my sister suffragettes, but we do it gladly because we trust that you, all of you, will carry forwards that precious torch of democracy and freedom. Keep pushing until women and men are equal. When no child is told that she is not worthy, that her voice simply doesn't matter because she is a girl. Thank you. And no surrender! And there goes Emily. Lastly, thank you very much again for inviting me and please do use this opportunity here today, chat with people afterwards, all the speakers, find out you know, how they got into what they're, what they're doing, whether it be in Parliament, councils, etc. There are so many opportunities and do not let anybody silence you and most of all, don't silence yourself. Thank you very much, and I do hope you'll leave a message for Emily, dear, hashtag dear Emily, for her birthday on Sunday the 11th of October, and perhaps even bake a cake or buy a cake and, and tweet us a happy birthday message to her. Thank you very much. Onwards.